arbitrary string. If that pair, that ordered pair, belongs to this language, then by definition, this grammar can, this C of G, can generate that string. And if it doesn't belong to the to this language, then uh, yeah, because because this language has been decided right by a, by a Turing machine. Well, therefore, uh, it, this grammar does not be does not generate that string. Right? So we've decided. In other words, you know, the machine, the Turing machine, is a decider. It will accept or it will reject. In other words, it will halt. It, it doesn't loop. All right. Uh, now, how how to do that? So, you know, it get, gets a bit complicated. So. <laughs> Proof idea rather than just directly into the proof. Where's the proof stuff? Oh, next session, in fact. So all this is proof idea. Okay, so one bad idea is just simply uh, you know go through all the derivations. Now we're talking about a grammar, right? Um, a derivation is what? That's the history of the substitution rules. Uh, you know, you start with your start. Oh gosh, it's a grammar. What do you, what do you start with? Start string. Start symbol, start, ver start variable. <laughs> what do you start with? I'm forgetting. What do you start with a grammar? It's S. Start. It's not a state. Start variable. Okay. A, a grammar. Grammars contain uh, two kinds of things, like variables and terminals. Right. And a derivation, starting with your start symbol, uh, then you apply all these substitution rules and. Uh, you rewrite a symbol for, well, usually a mix of other sim. Um, you rewrite a variable with usually a mix of other variables and terminals, okay? Until eventually uh, you've got a string that consists of only terminals, right? And that, that history is called derivation. Okay, so one one is just go through all derivations uh, to see if uh, you can derive W. Well, that's a dumb idea for various reasons, right? So, you know, it doesn't work uh, because, well, there might be an infinite number of derivations you, that you would have to try. So, you know, that's silly, okay? And another possibility, um, say, say the grammar uh, can't, it just doesn't, never generates W. Well, then the algorithm would go looking at all these derivations, but it would never, never find W, so it would never halt, right? So, therefore, it cannot be a decider, by definition, right? Deciders are Turing machines that halt, right? They either accept or reject, but they don't loop. You know, they, they don't go on forever, right? So, you know, that's, that's not a good idea. So, um, now, you... Uh, if uh, the... If the grammar does generate W, then uh, you could... You could use this idea to uh, to, to recognize the Turing machine as a recognizer. In other words, the Turing machine would uh, find that uh, derivation, okay, um, and and hence uh, it would recognize the, the language, but it, it but, but it wouldn't be a decider, okay, because um, it can't reject because you you may have an infinite number. And so uh, it, it would just never halt. So that's that's not a good idea. So, but we can save. We can save. We we can still go searching for derivations. Uh, well, we have to anyway, right? But uh, we're going to have to modify it somewhat. And the suggestion we'll make is that we will do a finite number of uh, derivations. We will look at a finite number. And you know, once we've gone through that finite number. Uh, if we have not found uh, the string, the, the correct derivation, then uh, maybe we can uh, reject. Now, I say maybe because uh, well, there's another, there's another factor that, that we bring in. Now, so to, to, to convert the tree machine into a decider, not, not just a, a recognizer, remember a decider it, it, uh, can accept and reject, and it's only those two. Okay? So, um, so, yeah, to make it a decider, we have to ensure that uh, the, you know, this algorithm, uh, that it only uh, has a look at a finite number of, of 
derivations. So it doesn't go on forever. Okay. Now, uh, now here, here's like this. Here's the core idea. In a, in a, well, there's two actually. One is look at a finite number of derivations to see if uh, the, the grammar can derive the string w. Uh, that's, I guess that's one core idea. But here's here's another one. Now, uh, the, the the main idea is um, convert your grammar. So it's just an arbitrary uh, um, context-free grammar, CFG. Convert it into uh, Chomsky normal form, CNF. And uh, if you're a bit rusty on that, uh, so uh, that would be chapter two, right? So go go back to chapter two. Uh, revised Ch Chomsky normal form. And the essence of that, what was that? Uh, the, the, the grammar is written in such a way that its uh, substitution rules, its overwrite rules, if you like, um, uh, on the right hand side you either have just a single terminal or you have two variables. That's it. Well, effectively. Okay? That's the Chomsky normal form. Now, there's an exercise, one of the, one of the problems in the, in the problem set at the end of the chapter. Now, we haven't discussed it. Uh, it's, on, it's on page 132 of your text, and it's problem number 2.26. Um, now, the, that exercise, and I ask you to do it now as sort of homework. Uh, it's a, a, a nice brain teaser. It'll get you thinking, right? And uh, what it says is that if uh, your input string, w, if it has length little n, and uh, what does that mean? Uh, well, what is a string? It's just a sequence of symbols, right? In this, in this case, terminals. Uh, so you have n, n of them in the sequence. So the length of your string is n. That's what you know, this means. W is just a string. And these vertical bars just mean length of, in other words, number of, of symbols, number of terminals in your string. So, so if you have n symbols in your string, then uh, the, the number of steps in your derivation is 2n minus 1. Okay? Now, to some of you that may seem quite obvious, others you're going to have to scratch your head a bit. But uh, we're going to use this result uh, you know, from this problem. Um, because uh, now we, we can convert our um, CFG, we can convert it into Chomsky normal form, CNF, right? And, and, and now that we know that after 2n minus 1 steps, uh, we will have the completed derivation, right? Uh, no, no more, no less, right? Um, uh, uh, a derivation of a CNF. Uh, where the string is of length n, it will it has a precise number of steps in the derivation, and that number is 2n minus 1. Okay, now that's useful. We we can use that. So what we're going to do now is uh, we'll now we will um, we'll check uh, only the derivations that have this many steps. Now uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we're given we're given the w, right? That's given. And the grammar and the w. So, uh, in our Turing machine, we can calculate the length you know, of the w. So we know we know what little n is, right? And then we can uh, we can check all the derivations that have two n minus one steps. Okay, and we'll get we'll get a, whole, you know, a list of derivations, you know, different histories, and then we just uh, to to check whether the String of terminals, you know, the end, the, the last step of the derivation. We just check whether that string of terminals is w. Right? That's that's it. That's the main idea. Okay. Now uh, there will only be a finite number of these derivations, right? so everything's finite. Now, um, now converting the, your CFG into CNF, uh, we we talked about that uh, in uh, chapter two. So, if you need to refresh yourself how to do that, so go to page 109, more or less, uh, section 2.1 in chapter 2, okay? So, uh, no, so do you, you, get the, do you get the idea now? So, we're going to check, basically, we're checking derivations to see if the grammar 
derives the string. And we're going to do that using this uh, snazzy little trick here. Um, we can calculate the length of the uh, input string w, it's, it's little n. We know then um, that uh, the derivation will, will take you know, exactly 2n minus 1 steps. So uh, we just derive the thing. Uh, you know, we, we, we go through all possible derivations of length with 2n with, uh, minus 1 steps. Okay? We have a look at all those derived, uh, well, all those derivations, and we see if one of them, one or more, um, only one, I think, uh, is the string w. And if so, uh, accept. Right? Well, next session is uh, the actual proof.